how you doing here okay so uh, the last settings were pretty good on my uh, audio setup with my SM58 going through the Behringer mixer and the Behringer V amp to the computer and then um, the lapel mic which is behind the mic you can't really see them lapel mic oh yeah I'm talking on the SM58 lapel mics uh, dual lapel mic it's um, two, two lapel heads going down to a Y and then it's a single I believe it's a stereo input but um, in this case it's really going to be mono because I've got it in a mono USB sound card plugged into the USB and uh, all I did try to put it in the back but we've got one port left on the back not in use and since it's fat I should have showed it to you but I never did anyway <clears throat> it looks a lot like one of these USB sticks only about twice as fat so uh, you can't, uh, you know, you got you kind of take up one and a half spaces when you plug it in if you've got if they're stacked, you know. The ones on the front of this are uh, not stacked. There's one on the right, and one on the left. But I wanted to have them both available, but that's just not going to work. <clears throat> so um, um, I'm going to kind of tweak my. I've got my headset on because I'm going to kind of tweak my settings, my 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 uh, input for the mics um, I've kind of been going back and forth on the mixer because um, generally you can kind of get it set and leave it but then there's just some things change you don't really ever know what it is um, over time especially uh, you can see that everything looks the same but it doesn't uh, sound the same sometimes you find that something got bumped and moved you know but sometimes uh, you just go with what sounds right. That's what you need to do. That's what mixing sound is all about. <clears throat> so um, the other day, uh, what I'm saying is the other day, I kept hearing like a little noise, and it sounded like the compressor kicking in. You could actually hear it. And when that usually means sometimes it's, you just have too much compression. It'll be cut. If you have too much compression, it'll be cutting off the tail end of the words or the sounds. But there's another, especially a, something like this V-amp, the compressor in this V-amp too, it's not a high end, you know, it's not even as quality of a DBX or anything, so, um, and it's, you know, 10, 15 years old now too, so maybe what they have, well, I don't know what they have now, I don't, I don't know what it sounds like, I mean, I don't have, uh, I don't have anything newer than that. Uh, well, this board is, it's bought it last year, but it doesn't have any compression built in or anything. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I, uh, you can play with the gain structure to, to get, my, uh, you know, to cause trouble and to get rid of trouble. So I kept hearing a little kind of a whoosh noise, not, not just like that, but the best I can do. And, um, uh, so I ended up backing off from where I had it on the, uh, on the line, uh, the level, the line level or the, what we always called the fader because what mixing boards we used had faders, but this. I mean, I actually I used some with knobs before. I used the ones with faders and powered mixing heads, PVs and stuff. But uh, or at the same time as a, I had a PVXR800 back in the 80s, which was a real mixer with sliders and everything. It was a powered mixer though. It had a, the amp was built into it. I think it was a hundred or 150 watt mixer. But uh, other people generally that I knew generally had little, you know, knobs like these here on there, and they were like you. They were rectangular boxes, you know, you sit in front of them, they were sitting like that. Anyway, uh, I didn't ever care for them too much. And so then later on in the, you know, late 80s and all through the 90s, I mixed with Mackie boards and a couple of Behringers once in a while and a you know, big Yamaha console in a big church. And uh, didn't do the church service. I did a play. They were doing a play. Or I helped with the play. I didn't do it. Uh, that was actually kind of earlier on in my learning days. So uh, I'd have been a little bit over my head to do it all by myself anyway, <clears throat> but uh, although I wanted to. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I brought the gain up a little bit. Uh, there's a gain up here, and it's you can't see all of the, let's see, really do too much moving around. I don't want to mess things up. Okay, right here. There's a gain. There's, there's a gain on channel one and two, and then three and four. Three and four are combined, five and six are combined, and there's stereo channels, and there is a line level uh but not a gain. So, and a gain is different than uh, the basically. I guess you could call the level. They just call it level on here. 
uh, and I think that's pretty common on mixers. But anyway, it's kind of a volume, but a gain actually amplifies the signal. Uh, yeah, to the volume and the volume. Well, you could look at it this way. There's what they call nominal, which is zero dB, and uh, with the uh, with the sliders or you know or the uh, knob levels, and actually. I'm going into getting into theory here now, but uh, in theory, not in practice, you would start at zero dB on your on your mixers and then either add or take away. But in actual practice, all the way back is down to nothing, and all the way up is as loud as it'll get. Just plain and simple. But the gain, I can't. I'm not enough. Don't know enough about electronics to tell you exactly how to say exactly how it works. There's a lot of people that can on you know on the internet and everything but um, <clears throat> anyway um, for instance if you just plug an SM58 in here and you leave the gain all the way down and you turn this all the way up you probably won't get feedback with a standard SM58 but as soon as you start let's say you leave it right I have it at about about two o'clock and I have the gain at about let's say you know just like just a, a regular clock with hands. Uh, if you can, if you ever seen one of those kitties, uh, we I still know how to read them. <laughs> so uh, that's the way we always. That's how we were taught to talk about things. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, the um, the uh, I'm trying to think what time that would be. Yeah, I'm not. The, I'm a little rusty, aren't I? The um, Okay, six o'clock at the bottom, seven, eight. I'm gonna say that's about nine o'clock is where I have the gain right now. Normally when I talk about the mixer, I like to <clears throat> have the camera on it, but I wasn't planning on doing that. Okay, so what I'm planning on doing is uh, trying to match the volume levels. And there's the thing is, SM58 uh, has a, a very different sound than the lapel mics do. And that's because the SM58 is, well, it's a better quality mic, way by far, but it has a different, warmer sound to it. And then it's running through the mixer, which I don't have any EQ. It's all flat on the mixer, but I do have it EQ'd in the V amp. Uh, I didn't want to double up on it. I wanted to keep it, I want to get it to where you know it's confusing, you know they're fighting each other, sort of kind of thing. So I left, uh, since I, I did like, I have, a, I had this for years and I like the EQ. It's easy to use and, uh, and one good thing about it is it, uh, well, the thing about, here's what I like, why I wanted to do that, because leave this, leave these all on uh, uh, flat. With, the, with the EQ, you call it flat when you don't take away, add or take away. Uh, and um, on here, of course, you can see the lights, you can see right where it is, but you once you get it set, you you store it, you know, you hold it in, uh, you hold that button in and, and until it blinks a couple of times and then it's stored and so you can change to different different. I want to, I want to say scenes because the OBS studio uh, I'll just call it scenes change to different scenes and uh, you know have different e presets EQ presets so it has some, you know it's got a memory uh, so it you know it is digital and I think it's pretty much all digital whereas the board is most mostly if not all analog so um, and that's just the type of electronics that that they used to get the job done. It's still both electronics, but digital digitals usually use uh, they incorporate some processors, you know, some uh, some sort of processor like a computer has, but of course it won't need to be that powerful. Although they might be more powerful than you may think, because in order to handle audio, it can't be no slouch, you know. But anyway, um, sitting here wearing this headphone, my ears getting itchy, and I'm not even using it right now. Um, so I have the Mike Ox. Well, it says Mike Ox, and that's what this one's called, Mike Ox Two. Well, let me get on the desktop. Let's run through the uh, cameras first. Let's see what they look like. I'm on Cam One. There's Cam Two. See if they're even working. Uh, I have it on when I, you know, I'm not really needing that when I'm just, but I, I'm working on getting everything set up for 
you know, easy flow and, work, you know, every, make sure everything's working for the video, my, my videos that I like to make all the time, the ones about computers and stuff. And then here's uh, cameras one and two. Well, I should have never even put those on. I can hear a little, my, my voice kind of echoes. It sounds like I'm down in a barrel with those on when there's, there's I don't have any sound turned on into them right now. So they're <laughs> really weird. Um, I think I'll leave them off until, <clears throat> until I get ready to actually start mixing with them. Um, then I got one in desktop, two in desktop, and then uh, I don't have 10 inch tablet or the, uh, or the endoscope, you know, plugged in or turned on or anything so now I'll go to the desktop and get into the settings <clears throat> and um, so what I want to do is uh, you know earlier in previous video I went ahead and uh, you can right click you can actually well you can just click on the little gear icon really any of them will get you there but you can click on the gear icon and go to advanced properties. I'm just using the left click there. I said started to say right click, but that's not how you do it actually. Um, in that spot. So then you can. Uh, <coughs> oh, it seems to have rearranged itself. Now I guess it's just because I have different things in here now. What do I have? Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Huh. I guess it was just, oh yeah, this is a different profile than I was, I kept jumping back and uh, forth between, well, scene collections actually, uh, it's a different scene collection. What I am, um, yeah, at some point I had uh, checked all of them in some of them and not in others. This one here, I'm not sure how it got like that, because I did that in, uh, maybe I did it in this one. Um, you don't. I, I don't think you really. Well, it really does depend. I, I think that pretty much all my inputs are only really going to be using channels one and you know tracks one and two. Uh, actually, this one here, like I said, is mono, so it really probably only using one. But it doesn't hurt to select more than you're actually using, unless something you had was an, for instance, an analog input, a mic, or something that was going to make noise because OBS is, I have it set, and that's the defaults. If you never changed it, it would be set to, uh, which is the way I've been until, I was, really yesterday is when I was reading up on the audio stuff and all the things you could do. You can do, uh, I, I'll try to remember to show that in a minute, but you can do stereo 5.1, 7.1, uh, uh, record it into your file, your video audio of your video file. Uh, it gets a little pretty complicated though as you start doing that. But <clears throat> anyway, so if you have these selected, if any of your sources actually had those extra channels, they would be picked up and then they would be put down in there. You know, mixed down to, I mean, put down in there, mixed down to stereo. But I do remember having this one on three and four, and then I went ahead and added that five and six. Desktop audio, that's the only place where you might actually get more channels if you were playing some video online or something that actually did have those channels you know there's always a possibility though that it could start cause some weird echo or odd feed, uh, probably not feedback but some odd echo sounds or something but um, I really haven't run into any I don't offhand know where you can go to uh, I suppose if you were like on some commercial site you know like I used to have Amazon Prime and uh, I don't actually know. I never pay any attention because I don't have a. I just have a stereo sound system in here, so I never pay any attention as to you know if any of the movies had you know surround sound or anything <coughs> that you could stream. <coughs> Excuse me. If they did. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we're just trying to think of where you'd go and hear you know run into something like that on the internet. But um, of course, you could pop in a CD, but then. I'm making YouTube videos, so you can't be playing any, you know, copyrighted content in your video, so or else you'll get, uh, get some, get flagged and all that junk. So, um, <coughs> anyway, I don't think, I don't see w where I would run into that, but, uh, but, uh, I just don't want to miss anything in case it's there, I guess. Now, if I run into some kind of problem, then I'll be going, scratching my head going, what's wrong? 
I'm sure you'd be fine not selecting all those for most. The reason I got to doing it was because I wasn't sure if this added mic might come up on like three and four or five and six or something like that. Since one, two, three, uh, one, two, and three and four seem to be selected by default. Seems like when you add a source. So, um, so I wanted to show that and. Um, Let's see if I do this. Let's see. See if there shouldn't be any difference. It should still look the same. Yeah. See, that's global there. Uh, see, it shows all of your uh, input sources right there. I have. Uh, see, I've got audio, cam one to desktop. Um, then I have desktop audio, mic aux, which is this SIM58. Those are preset names there. <laughs> NLBS. Mac Ops 2, and there is a Mac Ops 3, but I'm not using that, that you could turn on. And uh, when we go in there one more time, I just remembered the reason, the real reason I went in there. There it is. <laughs> I'm getting tired, I guess. I've been doing this all, all day now. Um, <clears throat> okay, here's what I want to do. I wanted to get this open, and... Um, so I'm going to turn on this. See, you have a monitor that you can audio monitoring. You can turn this on and off. And so I'm, uh, I'm going to turn it on with, my, and I've got my headphones on. I'll make sure I'm not blasting my ears. Turn it down real low. And I kept thinking like uh, monitor only mute output would actually mute my recording output, but it might. What I've noticed is when I put it on monitor and output, now it doubles up. And, uh, and uh, oh, you got, got a signal on audio, audio cam one to desktop. desktop. Why do I have a signal there? Oh, I know why. Oh, I know why. Because, because uh, I, I turned the, the mic on on that phone. So let's see. I don't have a mute button set up for that, so I'll have to mute it like that manually. Yeah, it's picking my voice up. Okay. Now, uh, now see, I have sound on desktop. And Mike Cox, and I know from listening to my recording, there's just a really bad echo going on right now. So uh, I could mute the desktop audio. I just now I didn't think about that before. Right now I can't hear it because I guess I've got it so low. Check one, two, a little check. Yeah, now I can hear it really well on my headset, but it won't. I had, I had thought that it drives me nuts. I had thought that it's because of my. Uh, uh, I had thought I remembered it was the speakers going through the mic causing the echo, but that's not the case. The case is, uh, oh, I just muted desktop audio and it, well, I can't hear nothing now on my headset, but, uh, um, <coughs> so, so it could be a helpful mo uh, monitoring tool or mixing tool except for that echo. So let's see. Now I'm thinking that maybe that one right there would do it. No, that changes nothing. I think what that does, I'm going to turn it off because it's driving me nuts. I think what that does is um, uh, stop it from going to the recording. This is why I said I've been saying don't you don't want to be using monitor only mute output because I think the output it mutes is the output going to OBS Studio because we're in OBS Studio. So I uh, could be wrong. Maybe we'll find out here in a minute. So. Monitor only mute output. Let's see. Now I can hear it just exactly the same, uh, but I don't know. And I see a signal in OBS, but I don't know if it's getting recorded or not. So I think that what that does is stop it from recording it. Now that doesn't change the sound at all to go to monitor and output. So um, I'm going to go back to off. Yeah, I can't stand it. I can't use the headphones. I can barely stand it through the speaker because it's not right on my head. So uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and uh, get down here. And oh, let me switch to the other mic. Let's see which one is it. Okay, now we're on the lapel. Okay. <clears throat> Let's listen to it for a second, though, before I take off. Let's see what it sounds like. Yeah, it sounds quite a bit different. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Don't think it's check one. Let me try, try to use it for a second because it 
probably will help me in my mixing endeavors here. Check on two. Check on two. Let me go ahead and turn the balls on. I think it's going to be too much. Check on two. Check, check, check. Okay. Um, check. Check one, two. Okay. Check. Hello, check. Hello, check. That is a SM58. Okay. But with, uh, okay, we got desktop audio. Okay, let me see if I can mute. Check one, two. Hello, check. Check one, two. Check. All right, check one, two, no. Check, check one, two. Check one, two. Oh, I see. I'm throwing myself in circles. Okay, I was like, why do we still have an echo? You still have... Yeah, it, it's more than my little pea brain can handle. I just get this... All that echo and just throw, makes me not be able to think. <clears throat> so, uh, right in my ears like... So I'm going to unplug my headphones because my speakers won't work while they're plugged in. Uh, and uh, I guess I'll just put them up here for now. I'll be careful with all these cables. I uh, <clears throat> had those plugged in and, you know, getting ready to use them. And then I got up and I was real careful with my, I have to watch this, you know, lapel mic cable. And I was real careful with that and I got it all setting over there. And uh, got up to go around to do something to, like uh, turn on. I think I was going to turn on cam two or something, and or maybe I was going in the other room. But anyway, my I didn't even know my foot was hung on the cable for the earphones. They yanked it out of the computer and yanked the earphones off of the laptop there, off my tray there, and all of it into the ground, <clears throat> just in one swell swoop. And uh, I don't like doing that. I don't only ever do something like that. And, every, and I, I don't know how many times I've gotten my foot hung on the uh, lapel mic cable, and usually it just, I, I, it kind of drag, like if I, when I take the mics off, and it's all still, you know, plugged in usually. Uh, I've actually been making sure I put strain relief on the end where the plug-in is, you know, but then with the mics, strain relief is it being on me, and, and uh, well, I have a twisty <laughs> hook to a belt loop as a strain relief. Um, for that part, but then when I take it off and I put it up there on the, I usually been putting it in, just laying them inside that bag where I keep the mic, and it yank, nearly yanks it off from up there, you know. When I try to, I remember, when, I try to remember when I get up, not to get up fast and <laughs> just in case, you know. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, okay. Now let's see what will happen if we turn on. Okay, we're on the lapel. Turn on the output. Okay. Check one, two. Check, check. Okay. Yeah, that's not as... It's irritating, but not as bad as the... Now I'm going to turn on just the... Uh, check one, two. Turn on just one yet. Okay. Don't want to hear it. <coughs> check one, two. Check one, two. Darn it. <laughs> okay. Um, now let's turn off the desktop. See, I don't hear the extra echo of the desktop. Or I don't think I do. But anyway, so I don't remember to mute it every time. Check one, two. So that's an echo, but not near as much. Okay. Let me see. Let's see if it gets worse. Check one, two. Check. Hello, check. Yeah. Well, it makes it sound like 
um, check one, two, check one, two. It makes it sound like when I have the uh, when the desktop audio like the um, like what I was describing the compressor chopping off the sound. Oh, I'm not on the desktop like I wanted to be this whole time. Okay. <clears throat> a while ago, I kept thinking about it, but I was like, well, I'm showing stuff. You know, I turned, flipped it over to the desktop just to kind of show what I was doing. Went over there to uh, get that headphone unplugged. Okay, so. Um, okay, so now I'm going to turn on. Uh, okay, let's see. No, that's the wrong one. Okay, and that one, check, 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 hello, check. Okay, now I just realized I can leave the monitor on for them, but I just switch between mics. Okay. Check one, two, check one, two. Hello. Check one, two, check, check one, one, two. Can't really, really tell, tell when they're, they're both on. on but check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Okay, check one. Hello, one, two, three, four, five. Check one, one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to get them both on and look, look at the video. video. Check, check one, two. Check, 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 check. check. Hello, check. check. Hello, check. It kind, kind of looks, looks like the, uh, the pedal is actually louder. Check, check. It actually, check. Hello, check. check. Hello, check. Okay. Um, check one, two. Check one, two. But when I hear it, well, it's it's sort of yeah, it's sort of a perceived loudness thing. Uh, it's so much thinner sounding and. Okay, check, check, check. check. <clears throat> okay, so I really can't tell that much. I think I've got it pretty good. But then when I listen back to the recording, um, sometimes one or the other of them seems louder. And of course, one thing about the SM58 is I do constantly get closer and further away from it, so it does get louder and softer. Because I try to, you know, when I move around, I don't. Sometimes I forget to be more careful, you know. So, so this, this is somewhat useful, but not. Okay, got them both on. It'll certainly tell you right quick when you've got them both on or something when you don't intend to. Now there's the uh, lapel again. <clears throat> um, I do have... Um, Close that right now. I do have, let's see, I can go in here. Let's advance properties. No, it's not properties. Oh, it's the. Uh, oh. Yeah, filters. There we go. So I do have filters. I've got the uh, noise gate. And I just left them on the defaults, and they sound pretty good the way they are. And um, compressor, but the compressor keeps from keeps from overdriving, and the noise gate cuts out the background noise. It won't pick up anything below a certain decibel level. Well, actually, well, I've got my head all mixed up looking at that before, so I won't try to explain it because uh, I mean I used to know how I. I it was back in the 90s, you know, when I was mixing sound, but I knew it just like the back of my hand, you know, how to set up a compressor and a noise gate, uh, rack mount gear, you know. But I, there is some differences for how they work. I'll say that. for I know very well. Like it says ratio X to 1. Well, it's set on default 10 to 1. Now, you could never do 10 to 1 compression in a real rack mount compressor uh, without... Uh, completely just kitting there to killing the signal. I mean, you'd have to scream with or have a 
you know, maybe a super loud guitar, you might do that. Or if we had the luxury of having enough compressors and everything to put them on the guitars and stuff like that. You really used to mostly just, if you did put them on any uh, thing, it would be like the bass. But uh, the, the vo vocals, number one. And then if you had more compressors, the drums. And then if you still had some more, you put them on the bass. And you really didn't ever need them on the guitar. I've seen people that really had nice, huge setups, you know, have them for every channel on the mixer. And, uh, but you do know, need to know how to use them for each different item. It's very different. But anyway, my point being, I used to do sound for, uh, you know, punk, punk, Christian punk bands and metal and grindcore and screamers and everything else and uh, uh, hardcore. And, uh, I always used, uh, I usually used uh, two to one, maybe two to five. There might have been a few times where I had some real hard, uh, hardcore or grindcore vocalist and I might actually do four to one, four to one or five or something like that. Never ever use anywhere near 10 to one. So they don't react like a real compressor. I don't know why they got so far off from the reality, you know. But if you try to, when I first started learning this year, you know, back when they first came on, you know, came out on uh, personal computers where a regular person can use them. I think they had them in the 90s on computers people couldn't afford. But uh, in the early 2000s is when I started, you know, getting a hold of the software. And I was on Windows back then. I then 93, 1, and then 98. All right, when, uh, you know, waves were, uh, wave uh, dot, you know, wave files were the big thing, and then MP3 was invented, and the real audio that was invented around the same time. Uh, that's the days when I was learning about this stuff, and uh, I full well remember how to use a compressor. And uh, I like to never got it figured out how to use the software once because they didn't work right. Uh, two to one didn't seem to do anything, and then you know you get all the way up to ten to one, and it's like maybe I can't understand. And they didn't always mark them. In a way that made sense easier like this one is marked perfectly ratio x and it always used to be uh written on the uh, compressors that, you know on the, the on the next to the knobs on the compressors they always used to have knobs not sliders could be you know two to one uh, one you know the numbers just like that but wouldn't say x it would say two to one one to, you know or three to one four to one so so on and so forth and the ones i was using had uh you know, the numbers generally painted on, and the knobs had little stop points, you know. It wasn't a digital readout or anything. There were some digital readouts on them, like, well, some of them had uh, numbers instead of like a, well, get out of here. Like this, you know, some of them would have a uh, dB meter like this on them, and some of them would have uh, little LED lights that lit up, you know. It's dependent, like all, you know, a row of LED lights. And some of them had a little screen, small screen with stuff like that. But that was the later ones in the late 90s. <clears throat> so anyway, um, the headset didn't help me at all. It made it just, all it did was drive me insane and I couldn't use them. So I can do it. I forgot. It's been a while since I've tried using this, uh, you know, sending the audio out through the, through the machine that you're recording. And with that echo that you get that I, I can't get away from it, so. Now, you don't want to leave your desktop audio muted because then when you do something that has desktop audio, of course, you won't be getting it. Uh, normally, I'd never turn it off. I'd turn it off just now to uh, cut down on that echo. was really heavy with that on. Um, and then that cam one to desktop, that needs to be muted right now for me because it is on and uh, the camera is picking me up. See, it's not near as hot of a signal. And that's pretty pretty good representation. Go ahead and switch to, to the, the SM58 now, just so you can kind of get. Um, now, that's, that's something that um, I'm sure you're hearing that. So let me mute it. <laughs> I'm sure you're hearing that in the recording. Of course, I can't hear it because I turned all that all that off because it's driving me insane. You can use it if you can stand it, but you got to be really careful because if you turn that on and you have your volume up to what's generally your normal listening listening level, it's going to blow you out of the house or the studio or wherever you are and it's probably going to feed back on your mics most likely especially like say the lapel mics they're condenser mics so 
if it's, if you have one like one of these cheap lapels like I have on right now, or an expensive one, you know. Actually, it can probably feed back easier on an expensive one because it probably have it pick up better. They're usually more sensitive the more expensive ones, you know. But um, there is another thing that I want to do, and I think I will go ahead and do that. Um, go into the settings. I did this before on the uh, Mike Ox and the Mike Ox 2, you know, the S58 and the lapel. Now I want to find uh, everywhere. Let's see. I need to get, I think I'll move this over here where I can see. Okay, yeah, audio cam one to desktop. Everywhere where it says anything about audio cam one. It should be different names in each spot unless I've only got it in there once or twice. I don't see it at all. I must I should guess I wasn't paying good attention. Oh I, I was looking for the ones that already had a shortcut in them. I wasn't reading the names. There, there we go. Okay. So um Oh yeah, see so you can do start streaming, stop streaming, and all the other things too. But I, I I use shortcuts constantly in my work on the computer, and some of them are already taken for other devices. So, and if and a lot of times my fingers slip when I'm typing, so I could turn my stream on and off. So I don't do any of that stuff. Um, but I do want my mics. That's really really helpful because. Uh, for instance, this audio cam one, I only have it in like three, I think three, three or four uh, scenes right now. But I really, I'm going to end up putting it in all of them if I if I end up using it. So, uh, okay, here we go. What's this cam one stream? Oh, okay, they've got it organized. Well, that's good. Cam two stream. Cam. Cam one stream. Cam one and desktop. Oh, okay. And then cams one and two. Oh, okay, okay. This is going to be hard. <laughs> this is why I avoid, tried to avoid having to do this again. It was. I remember. I still remember how hard it was. I think it took me four hours or more. Really. So. Uh, I may not. Do, I don't think I'll try. I think I'll try to do the ones that I do have in there, but I don't think I'm going to try to do them all right now. I think I'm too tired already. It's easy with the mic aux inputs because they're global. Uh, they're they're in every scene automatically, and all you have to do is do it once for each one. But when you're sending that audio in through uh, VLC source VL. Actually, it's called a VLC video source, even though you're really just only sending it audio. And uh, other thing is, is the way I, I had you, ha I had to get around a name, so I started just using the IP address and stuff because uh, when I originally set these up, because it, you it this the OBS you know soft system said you can't give it the same name, uh, and you had to say this name's already taken, so you had to. Had to. Uh, there's one of them. Audio cam one to. Audio cam one to desktop. Okay, so what did I want? Oh, cam one. I'm gonna make it F1. Audio cam one to cam one and desktop. I was looking for. Well, audio cam one to desktop is what I'm looking for, but I found something else. So, oh, there it is. They're not in order. Okay, after all. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> I don't know why I keep rolling back and forth. I'm just <coughs> video media source. Okay, yeah. media source desktop audio. You could do that one, but I, I think, well, it shows up in every scene. So, if you mute it, it, it th those ones that are default, you know, that are like global. You don't necessarily, you know, well, no matter what scene you're in, if you, uh, 
what got me started doing it in the first place, no matter what, um, with the uh, same same source, the uh, you know the audio from a camera in different scenes with different names. This was the only way I could mute them all at once, turn them on or turn them off all at once. Was with the shortcuts, and so and what I had always been doing is just manually doing the uh, Mike Ox because it always showed up in every scene. But it's getting harder and harder for me to hit that thing, and I keep miss miss <laughs> miss. Uh, missing it and stuff and and uh so i decided to go ahead and set up shortcut for it and i really do like it so far i haven't had any trouble i was afraid i would accidentally turn it off when i didn't realize it uh and uh be silent you know i mean you do have a well you'd have the the v the audio v vu meter to look at you know the level meter but you know when i'm working on a computer or something i'm not looking over at the computer screen i'm looking at what i'm doing so um, so far, so good with that, though. But, uh, but when you got the same audio source going uh, going into different, you know, separate every scene separately, it's not they're not it's not global. Uh, I wish you did have a way to add a VL stream in here. Uh, I don't think you can do that, can you? VLC video source. Wait a minute. I have not really. Oh, that's the media. Uh, that's the uh, push to mute. I remember that. Enable push to mute. Push to mute delay. Enable push to talk. Enable push to talk delay. Yeah, but what do you push? Oh, yeah. Well, let's see what we got here. Um, I was happily surprised when I put my shortcuts in there. They just worked on those mic oxes, but I think maybe you have to put it in the shortcuts and then enable push to mute and push to talk. thought you did. Now, then that's ringing a bell. But anyway, VLC video source. Well, that's it. But what, what video source? Well, if it doesn't work, I'll know I have to... Uh, enable that and then media source that is like my music that I play at the beginning of the end and uh, I don't need to mute be able to mute those I just get off of them when I don't want it to be heard and uh, that's video well it doesn't have sound coming through it anyway that's uh, from one of the cameras I don't remember which one is which because it's just the IP address and there's another media source so I have music I play in the beginning and the music I play on my intro music and my exit music and then here's another camera and then that one says it's cam one 194 actually that's 194 so I had to rename it because it was in there that's because it's in there as cam one all by itself and then it's cam one in USB and then there's cam one and desktop so um, I see audio cam one two cam one and desktop what I'm wondering is if I did that, they will push to mute. And they will push to talk. I'd have to go back. I remember. I, I remember. I remember when I first got OBS uh, started. That was one of the first things I thought was pretty cool, and I had to go read up on it to understand what they were talking about. Now I've forgotten exactly. But audio. Okay, so audio. I'm gonna leave it alone because everything's okay, except for I just wanted to add a mute on that. Um, audio cam one. Cam two in desktop, and then mic aux two, mic oxy. I'm, I'm doing a, a shortcut for mute, muting and unmuting already. So I wonder if that's no. I start to say I wonder if it's like a toggle switch, you know, a foot switch or something that you could plug in. I have one. I have one for my uh, my V amp 
too. Uh, I actually have a foot switch in the floor, and I can switch between uh, A, B, C, D, and E <clears throat> and back. <clears throat> so I can go forward and then back. Um, I thought about doing something like setting it up as, as like a, a mute switch, like maybe make the one next to A, make B silent, you know, somehow. And, and uh, <clears throat> I don't know how, exactly how I'd do it unless I just rank cranked up the compression or something it'd be some kind of <laughs> ninja hack as <laughs> as uh, morton says morton the server guy that i like to watch his video but uh his ninja hacks uh, his ninja hacks sometimes are just the silliest thing but uh he's doing it as a joke you know saying it as a joke <coughs> but anyway um yeah i've got myself all s sidetracked here half confused but I do know that I added it to these just by putting what my control you know I wanted control 4 and control 5 and that works so I'm not sure what the push to, push to mute has to do with anything right now okay audio cam 1 to desktop that's the one I'm looking at so I want it to be on control 1 and you just do the same thing control 1 mutes and alt control one also unmutes and then you're good so let's see if we can demonstrate that now uh, yeah you should be able to see it the top one I can't move this any further up so and I don't want to close it I'm not done yet see it unmute mute unmute mute but that won't get them all um, now let's see where else do I have it. I'm just going to go through each one and you won't be able to see. Oh, I can't go through each one. Okay, in order to switch to the next one, I want to see where it is. That's me. It's I don't have it in there. I don't have it in there. Uh, I don't have it in there either or there. Let's see. Ah. Okay, so a cam one and desktop, it's in there. Okay, so, okay, so um, well, let's go through um, cam two and desktop. Two it's not in the 10 inch tablet or the endoscope. Or okay, the all right, so I can go back to the desktop now and I can go through my settings and just look for it. Okay, so, um, put it in the middle. I can read it better <laughs> in the middle. Hotkeys. This is the hotkeys. Okay, now it's down towards the bottom. Well, let's go a little slower and look through it. Probably don't mess something up rolling it over these things. I think maybe you can rename them. No, you can't do anything to them. Okay. Uh, show. Hide. Okay, yeah. So you can have a. Tell it to switch to a scene. You can have it to show and hide. You can do all kinds of things with these. Uh, different with them uh, in its tablet show VLC video source hide VLC video source switch to scene so in those scenes you can have shortcuts that would do those particular things you can make it nice and complicated if you want I need to have it all like I, you know, where I can read what it is. I click on it, and it uh, it would be really nice if you could use shortcuts to go to each one of these scenes, and you had the brains to remember every one of those shortcuts. But I don't. So, and again, like I said, you run in, you will run into conflicts. Uh, you're going to run out of shortcuts. You're going to run into conflicts with your pro other programs. Uh, the, the nice thing would be is you could be on another uh, desktop. And do a switch you know without coming back over here but you're going to run into conflicts with uh, other programs like i try i think i tried control m for uh mike you know for the sm58 well it did something and uh did something in here so uh, that was already default for that so i decided that probably the, the one thing that want you know the numbers the regular numbers one through zero um or one through well, one through zero one through ten <laughs> um but it's a zero um 
those numbers, you know, they're usually not defaulted. Control though, control number is not usually defaulted. I've never ran into that defaulted as a shortcut in a program. You could use something else besides control, but I'm really used to using control. So, um, I'm just going through these to kind of see if anything rings a bell. So much information in there, I just can't read it all. I'm just going to kind of scan it or not scan it but just look at it as a picture basically look at it as a picture and see if anything pops out all right cam one to cam one and desktop cam one and desktop cam two and desktop okay now we're getting there audio cam one to cam one and desktop and you see and if you use the same shortcut in every one of them then it's global it turns it into a global control. Okay, now cam one to cam two and desktop. That'll be that one there. Cam one to cam two and desktop. I know I could have done that way faster, but I can't help it. I'm tired and uh, worried that I'm gonna screw it up real bad because well when you screw it up it's a pain to find it and fix it. Believe me, I've done it. Okay, so um, I cox now PLC video source. I don't know what that is. Something is just named VLC video source. And I don't know what that would be. I wonder if that's something that's there that I'm not using. How could it be there and me not be using it? I've named everything else something that tells me what it is. Maybe that's uh, the actual make a video. video. No, it says mute, unmute, push to mute, push to talk. I'm not sure what that push to means. I really don't know. Play, pause, restart, stop, next, previous. Wow. <laughs> that would be the next and previous would be, uh, oh, no, that would, oh, okay, in a VLC video source, right. Oh, that'd be kind of cool, actually. I don't know if you could do it, but my keyboard has uh, play, pause, you know, dedicated play, pause buttons and all that stuff, so. As play, pause, stop. Doesn't have a restart button. But you can probably figure out a way to do it. Next <coughs> and previous, it has all those buttons. I used to set that up with this keyboard. I've had this keyboard, I've got two of them. I actually wore one out. Uh, well, some of the keys stopped working good. The volume was the one that got real bad. There's a real volume knob on it. I really like that. I don't like having to press a bot button to, to change the volume. I like a real knob. Absence with the absence of a slider, I like a real knob. But um, yeah, I'm, I bought one. I bought one for like twelve bucks. It's, it was already old when I got it. Uh, HP multimedia keyboard uh, from fifteen plus years ago now, and then. Uh, shortly afterwards or maybe i bought one for a little more than 12 bucks and they came out with the one that came i saw that this one was on sale for 12 bucks and i bought it for 12 bucks i remember that you know a few months or a year later or whatever and uh this one stayed in my rack plugged into oh it was plugged into my laptop well for years it didn't get used hardly at all it was put away and then i plugged it into my laptop and i'd use it uh, just at night, you know, before I went to bed watching TV, and then actually got that rack on the shelf where I put uh, it's a shelf for keyboards or whatever, but it's perfect for a laptop. And anyway, I had it. Uh, oh, I had it below that, and but what would happen was when I'd pull that shelf out or something I was doing. So, yeah, it was when I pulled the shelf out. Sometimes it, this was on the shelf below the sh the sliding shelf. And they're slick, and this plastic is slick, you know, and it would, sometimes the cable, you know, the, there's a mouse, you had a mouse that plugged, this is a USB, a keyboard with two USB ports, and the mouse 
it's got a real short cable it came with a mouse it plugs into it and uh it would get it would get hung on that tray sometimes and would yank it, this big old heavy thing out on the floor and it would land on that plug for the keyboard and the way this thing is made it it didn't break the uh, after falling enough times um it does it is kind of loose like if you wiggle it you lose connection but it never did break it, it and it, it all it ever did was bend the uh the uh, connector, the male connector for the mouse, but the female one, it is loose on one, whichever one it is. It got dropped on so many times. Anyway, the other one I wore out. You know, I just used it for so many years. Some of the keys weren't working good anymore. But I really don't. It's like it's only USB one, so I don't really ever use it anymore. That and some things. Yeah, telling an off the wall story. Some things you have plug in there and that you'll get a message on your computer saying the voltage is not high enough to run this device and uh, there actually is a, a wall wart you can plug into well that's for the KVM switch well I think it helps though yeah I have a uh, the KVM switch also has USB ports and it'll work without that power you know power supply but when you plug that in I think it makes that stop happening I just now realized so, but I guess it's sending power up to the keyboard because it's plugged into the KVM switch. But also, the other problem was I thought it'd be so cool because I could plug my printer. Although I'm now I'm going to the KVM switch, okay? Okay, I'll finish that sentence. I thought it'd be so cool because I can plug my printer into the my USB, new one, USB printers are new, plug it into the KVM switch. And I could plug just all kinds of things into the KVM switch or the keyboards or whatever. And the problem is I'm always constantly switching my KVM switch. I never stay, you know, I, if something's going on and I have to wait on it, I go to another machine and do something else on the other machine. And so I'm in the middle of a print job and I decide, well, I don't want to wait on that. and I'll do something else. I don't want to sit and watch that do. So I would flip over to another machine. Well, it, it killed my print job. It disconnected the printer from the machine. <laughs> so... So I've never really used the, there's two or three extra ports, maybe four extra ports on that KVM switch. I, I tried plugging a, 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 a webcam in there, and I thought, well, that'd be kind of cool. Every web, every every machine I get on has a webcam, you know, because you can plug and unplug webcams without causing trouble. You darn sure don't want to do a any kind of a drive, you know, a USB drive or a USB stick or anything. It would uh, break your rights and break your stick and break your, little, your file system on it, you know what I mean, not break the stick itself. But so anyway, but when I was doing that originally, it was in Windows uh, XP, and it had all those sounds, and I liked having the sounds, but, and some of them, I don't care how many, those ones that goes, don't, don't, I don't care how many times I turn them off, they turn themselves back on uh, in XP. And I, I, even when I changed them, they'd go back to the defaults. I guess when it was getting updates, they did that. Now, now I, kind of looking back, I guess I don't care that's what it was, but, uh, um, I'm off on, I don't know why I'm off on side stories. I guess that means I'm too tired to get any real work done anymore. Okay, so I did my uh, F1. Uh, uh, okay, F1. works. Okay, now that's in the desktop. Okay, now that's in the desktop. Okay, now I'm going to, okay, yeah, now. let's make, let's turn it off because we don't want to, that, that mic is on on camera one. Now, I don't have it on the actual camera setting. I think what I'm going to do you know, I haven't tried, but well, before I do that, I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to try, um, I have not tried today <laughs> starting a stream, and I don't really think that it's going to magically work. Well, it could if there was an update uh, to OBS and it fixed whatever's wrong. i got to make sure I'm getting automatic updates on this machine. It just hit me today that I was looking at my kernel's and I thought, I saw that, you know, what numbers they were, and I remember the kernels, because uh, well, this is for door 28, but the kernels should actually, I think, be this, well, maybe they're not the same. Uh, but they're definitely different numbers than the ones on the Net Pro Max for door 29, you know, the server I just set up. So anyway, I, I got to thinking, you know, I haven't got a new kernel in a while, so uh, since I've been paying attention to the boot screens lately, <coughs> And uh, I know new kernels are coming out in Fedora 29, so usually you're going to get a new kernel. It may not be the same number, but you're going to get some new kernel around the same time in the you know the previous systems too. 
I got to make sure I ever, I might not have ever set up automatic updates. Possible. So I won't ever get a fix if I don't have automatic updates I have, unless I do a manual update. So I guess I better check that. But what I want to do is try streaming. I want to back up. Now that I've made more changes to this pro, uh, these uh, scene collections, I want to back them up. Yeah, I, while I wasn't making a video, I went ahead and renamed the two main the two scenes that I thought I liked the best out of all these I have. Uh, so it was, was you know, on, on Title VI, I renamed it to Cams 1 and one and 2 is what that means. SM58 on the mixer and lapel on the USB uh, audio uh, sound card. And then the other one uh, that I was working with is uh, Cams 1 and 2, uh, 1 and 2 with uh, audio. Every, every channel has uh, on uh, every scene has cam every scene with cam 2 in it has audio set up for coming from cam 2 and then the SM58 uh, on the mixer and then lapel on the USB and it's was you know untitled too and then these others I didn't alter and then I backed them up but anyway yeah let's uh let's export this one right now while I'm thinking about it and I'm trying to figure out how to what I did is I renamed them first so it gave them it gave them uh, the right name inside of the file because I discovered that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what you name the file. When you import it, it's still going to be whatever's name is inside of that file. So um, let's do this then. Since I've changed this one up so much now. Well, no, let's don't do that yet. I'm trying to think. Let's, let's don't change it yet because it's really not that different yet. Uh, see, I've already got one that name, and I already saved one that says backup. Um, number six. Oh no, I overwrote number six. I didn't make a backup of it. So let's just call it backup then. Oh no, yes I did. I got number six. Then I've got number six backup. See now I'm I'm running I'm getting starting to get to where I I really probably ought to go up another name another number or something. Let's go up another no that won't help unless I rename it. That's what I'm getting into. Okay. I could just say backup two, but I'm gonna end up confusing myself. It'd be better I think if I stick with some stick with a series number or a date. I, but see these are all done on the same date, so that's not gonna help. I started to go by the date, and I thought, well, this is just all. I've already got two for the same day. That would be three for the same day. So, yeah, let's go ahead and rename it then. And whichever one of the check marks on, that's the one you're working on. Okay, so let's rename it to, uh, and oddly enough, when you don't, you know, it's in, it's in a parentheses there, which I like that. It makes it easy to see the number, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, Okay, now it's number seven, but it doesn't. Uh, there's several things that uh, I put a uh, cam one and two, you know, the sign for and, you know, and uh, when you go to save it, it won't do that. So it, I, I decided to not. I figured it'd be a source of confusion for me, so <laughs> so I decided to not put and or uh, any. And then I noticed that the six doesn't have the parentheses. So then I thought, oh well, that'll be okay. I can handle that, you know. But the ands not showing up, being in the, in the one in OBS but not in the backup. I thought, Jason, J S O N. Okay. So um, yeah. See, now we've got one, and you have to put the file extension in there yourself. If you, it won't put one on there, and then when you try to import them, you can't import them. It doesn't even see one, see them, and, and so. I figured out that they uh, were called Jason somewhere. Oh, well, here's how I figured it out. You go to import one. It's it's right there. It's looking for Jason files. J S O N, Jason or Jason. And so I thought, okay, I guess I need to rename the file to Jason. <clears throat> so now it's backed up with the work that I've done, and I wanted to make sure and do that because I'm going to. Um, 
try starting a stream and that'll crash it most like you know 99 percent chance it's going to crash it so i didn't want to lose all this work i just did um and then here's what i'm okay one in desktop now now should be oh that's not oh yeah it's muted okay one in desktop why isn't it muted I guess it was off. I guess it was the opposite. Okay, so now that one's muted. Desktop audio. Okay, that one was already muted. That's what I was expecting to see is since I started out with it muted, and this is the thing I was talking about. You have to get them all in sync with each other, and then they'll stay together. So one in desktop, two in desktop, desktop. Okay, now I'm going to unmute it. Okay, Oh, now it's muted. Desktop. Okay. Have I got something wrong here? It should be muted. Okay. Now, I think I just now, messed it up. I think I just no? It up. Should no. be muted. Okay, now. Okay, now they're all three muted. Now I should be able to say able unmute, to say, unmute, and they should all be unmuted. All be unmuted. There, yeah. There. When you're tired, yeah. when you're tired, it gets complicated it to your complicated. to my brain. When I'm tired, it gets complicated to my brain. So now when I flip through them, they'll all stay muted. What is that? Oh, it takes a minute for that screen right there to refresh too. So I see, like I thought desktop audio was muted for a second there, and it wasn't. So, uh, yeah, it takes, it takes a good while. It may have to do with the 1500 millisecond, uh, switch delay. I don't know why it would, but that's what it seems to be. <laughs> I have a 1500 millisecond fade, uh, you know, takes 1500 milliseconds for it to fade between scenes. But I don't know why it would cause that to do that, that interface, you know, window. But it does do that, especially I think the longer you... Well, I've rebooted the machine, though. I haven't been streaming all day, you know, without rebooting. But the longer you run it, the more it might do stuff like that. OBS, I mean. Okay, so... Um, there we go. There we go. Now it's on again. Now it's on again. It's on again. Yeah, and see, I've got all these other yeah, scenes to do. I'm too tired to do that to tonight. Do. Though. So let's go ahead and. Uh, but I wanted to. I just wanted to. I don't have the lapel plugged into the camera one mic, but I just turned on the onboard mic, you know. And so at least I can test it and I can see the sig that I have an audio signal and everything. And uh, yeah, you do have to be patient and wait for that to change. It does take a second to change. And it looks. It really. It just <laughs> freaks you out when it does that. It does. Doesn't always take a long time like that either. Okay, now, Mic Ox 2. That might end up being, ended up being confusing to me because it has a 2 on it, but I set that to uh, Control 5 because I set Mic Ox 1 to Control 4. So I thought, okay, Control 5 and then Control 6, but that 2 is already beginning to catch my eye. You see, I already have Cam 2. Uh, I already have been using Cam2 on Control2. I don't have a Cam2. Uh, I mean, I don't have a mic on Cam2 right now, but I can, but I do have it in there, see? No, wait, that's not it. See, now I'm, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have it in this scene, in this set of scenes. And the other one I do. Um, so, uh, I don't think Cam 2 is in any of these. Let me look. Let me look through them and see. Let's see. So no, it's not in there. Let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. I know where to look now. Okay. Yeah. It's there's no audio from Cam 2 at all in this one. <laughs> Going 
running through all my scenes. Some of them are black because I don't have the source turned on. And, uh, but yeah, I need to get every one of them. Need to get every one of them set up like that. Now, what I was thinking, the reason I went ahead and backed that up, I was thinking I might go, instead of manually doing every one, uh, wait. Yeah, I, what I, I still don't see why I couldn't copy and paste, you know, right click, copy. I know it works, and then paste it into each one, but give it a different name to keep it from, uh, but actually, there was no problem this is what I might have. This is maybe what broke my streaming, though. So yeah, I don't. I don't think that'd be wise to do that in this scene. This scene doesn't have anything like that in it. Anything done that way in it, I mean. Uh, so anyway, let me, I'll show you in the other scene. I'll switch over to the one that was. Now, camera. Two. Um, audio cam two is in every scene, just like that. Audio cam too, and the and you can't do that manually; it won't let you. But if you uh, copy and paste it from any, uh, you know, wherever you have it, copy and paste it, it'll let you do it, and it works. Um, and see now, there where is audio cam two? There it is. It's at the top, and it's muted. So um, let me see. Just get in the desktop so you can see it better. Okay, yeah, audio cam two is at the top. In this particular view of it, it changes. It just does all this at its own will. You can't reorganize these. I wish I could. But Audio Cam 2 is right there. Um, and I can unmute it, but it won't matter because I have audio turned off on the camera too right now. But if I had audio turned on, then you would see a signal. So, uh, and then the mic aux, and because I'm running the SM58, you can see that signal. And then the uh, aux 2, which is a lapel. There we go. It comes on, and that's both of them. And now there's the SM58. So, uh, yeah, that'll that'll work. See that? Okay, so, yeah, I don't have to reset that. Or did I set that up manually already? I can't remember now. Might have done that yesterday. I'm still not quite sure if the settings you do in the settings area are global to your and, and saved in your profile. <laughs> Or if they're actually saved with your uh, scene collection, and we keep going back and forth, mostly because I get get some things figured out, and then when I start getting tired, I start forgetting. Okay, that's both of them again. Uh, I might have done that uh, manually by going into. Seems like I remember I did it in here in this setting, in this scene, this uh, scene collection, and then uh, realized, oh, that's not even the one I'm going to be using, you know. Because I'm going to move away from audio cam two and do audio cam one, <clears throat> so I thought, well, why don't I just leave this one like it is? And if I want to do audio on cam one, then I'll switch to that collection. And if I want to do audio on cam two, because it, it, when you put the more stuff you put in there, the wider this, the taller this gets. If you want to be able to see all your audio, and it really is helpful, then your your preview gets too small. So. Um, yeah, that could be really uh, quite helpful to have uh, one centered around, you know, audio from Cam 2 and another one centered around, uh, I don't need to save that again, I've already done it. Switch to that one, then it is for, you know, wireless audio from Cam 2. Well, it's still wireless, even though I might be tethered to that camera if it's not in my bag around my waist it may be up there on the monitor where i keep it or somewhere else like i was sitting in the camera too on the desk next to me but it's still sending the audio wirelessly over the wi-fi to the computer so it's still wireless even though it doesn't feel wireless when you when you when you can't get up and run around you know so um that is is I can I, I just thought I'd spend a couple hours setting this up and then get to working on the net pro max or something and I sp spent I've worked all day on it since I don't know when I got started 11 or 12 I guess it was 12:30 or 1 by the time I got you know on the computer but 
I remember I got up at like 1030 and of course I ate breakfast and all that stuff. So, um, imagine it was, you know, 1230 to one. It seems like, it seems like I remember it was around 1230 to one when I first got on the computer. So all this time now, so that's 1122 now. So I've spent, you know, 10 hours at least, if not more, if not 11 or so, just doing these tests over and over and changing things and trying to get it right. And I didn't get done. And my real, what I had in mind, I, I, <laughs> what I had in mind was to reinstall OBS Studio to see if that would fix the, uh, now my camera's way behind, to see if that would fix my, um, sometimes if you switch off and switch back, it will see if this one's working. Oh, that's behind too. I don't see myself waving yet at all. So everything, it's just my machines are tired than I am. So, um, um, I just stay on the desktop, I guess. I, uh, <coughs> now I went blank. I was going to re, I decided the last thing I can think of to do is to reinstall OBS to, um, um, <coughs> <coughs> I am making a video, aren't I? Oh, they're not in the, yeah, they're not in the order I usually put them in. Okay, so. Yeah, it's, I guess I'm still, my, uh, hopefully, I better, I better watch there for a little bit, but well, I mean, not just sit there and watch, but. Yeah, you, when, without a live feed to go check on, you, it, the only thing you got is to look at your video file and see if it's growing um and i'm wondering if it is you see in the switching between those scenes uh, it could have stopped killed the video stopped it it did the other day it may not be something that you should do it may uh it make uh some it may be real uh iffy about whether or not it's going to stop the video it is not getting any bigger and i'm worried now Looking at this one right here, I don't want to delete it or anything, so I'll stay off of it. But uh, wouldn't that be strange if now MP4s can get bigger than I've got, I've got plenty of MP4s bigger than 1.6 gigabytes. I've got them. I know I've got. I've probably got. Some, I know I've made some in the past that were three and a half gig. And I think I made some that were 10 gig. So, oh, that's the other thing I just now realized. I uh, if I'm still making a video here. Uh, I don't really want to stay making MP4s, even though they do seem, I think I see a visible, well, not those first two I made down here that I've already renamed. I think I saw a visibly better video when I changed to use an FFmpeg instead of the default encoder. And uh, now everything else was the same. All my settings were the same. That's what I was thinking I would do. Um... As the file gets bigger, it takes longer for that number to change there, so I'm thinking it might still be working, but I'm starting to think maybe not. Um, eleven twenty six. Eleven twenty six. Well, maybe it's working. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I need, I want to go back. I think I'm going to go back to FLV, even though I really do think I can see a, just a slight difference in better, a better, less pixelization in in the video. Or uh, well, in in, in uh, you can kind of see not pixelization, but the dots, the color dots. You know, just very small color dots sometimes, depending on the light in the room. Of course, it's constantly changing between day and night, and this sun shining through my window, you know, through my curtain and stuff. And different conditions, uh, you can see a di you can see it uh, difference and but it looked clearer. This that video right there looked clearer. And um, than any of these others, you know. So I got since I changed I didn't really notice so much in that one. I don't know why. But in that one I did there. And then today, I really forgot. I meant to, that was one of the first things I meant to do was uh, all the things I've been doing all day got 
didn't wasn't supposed to take that long. I was going to do a quick sound check and kind of equal out the mics, and then I was going to go on, and it t- took all day. But uh, yeah, I want to go back. I think I'm going to go back to FLV because of the fact that if the video gets interrupted, it gets broken. Like this one could be broken. If it got interrupted, it'd be broken, and it won't play on YouTube. And the only way I could fix it is to edit it with a video editor and give it a... What happens is it doesn't have an ending. I will call it a tag, but, you know, the code that tells it tells the players this is where the end of the video is. It doesn't have it. With MV4, it won't play. With FLV, it will. Uh, it, it, it does kind of act funky, and some players won't handle it, but... Oh, VLC will. VLC will play the broken MV4. Well, sometimes if they're broken in a certain way, it'll say this file is broken, especially AVIs. It'll say it's broken. Do you want to fix it? And it can fix the AVIs. Uh, I think it's the only one it can fix. Um, But uh, it's kind of an odd, neat feature and kind of odd that it only does it with one kind of file. I don't know exactly how how come it can or what, but it's always been that way. (coughs) And... uh, (coughs) But if uh, <coughs> if MV4 doesn't have an ending, <coughs> then uh, you'll get an error when you try to upload it to video, uh, YouTube. And it warns you of that. That what reminded me of it is it warns you of that when you switch. Well, when you're using the VLC, I mean the OBS codec, it warns you. And uh, <coughs> but if you what if you switch what I did, I'll switch to FFmpeg. It didn't. You didn't come up with anything like that. It just started doing it. I think it stopped. Uh, it hasn't changed now. One twenty-nine, but this still says one twenty-nine p.m. Maybe I'm just worried about it too much. But uh, well, one thing I can do: is one point six gigabytes. Yeah, didn't change. Sometimes the window don't refresh, you know, but. Uh, Sure seems like it ought to, the clock ought to have went to the next minute by now. <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to quit anyway because I'm, I'm just tired and rambling anyway. So, uh, okay. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if, is the camera working? Oh, it's still way behind. I don't know where the camera is. So, um, now it could be that the machine, well, the machine is at 30, oh, there's my hand, okay. It's at 40% CPU usage right now. See, I added more work for the machine, so it will help to get off of using uh, MP4s and go back to using FLVs. So, what I was thinking was, uh, well, I want to try starting a stream, just like it is, I think, just to see. Uh, And also, I want to change those settings. I'm kind of confused about trying to say what settings. And then if that doesn't work, I'm going to do the last ditch ever of uninstalling OBS. Uh, And that's why I've been working so hard on getting things set up uh, and exported so that I can... uh... Oh, it worked. It's still working. It went to 1.8. That's at 1.8 gigabyte. Oh, good. Um, Let me go back over there. Uh, with these, uh, with these um, scene collections backed up, you know, then I can import the ones the into uh, into my new OBS. <clears throat> and I think that I won't. I have lots of backups here. Of uh, I might make one more profile backup, but I don't think I want to. Uh, I'm worried that my profiles that I imported is just what uh, could have been could possibly break it. You know, like if it, if it's working, I mean, I won't do it at the beginning. What I what I did before is not add a single thing and just imported my profiles. Well, that worked before, but it actually, as far as the uh, profile, I don't see a real big benefit because you know you've got your settings that you need to do and uh, actually it was working on the defaults it hasn't been working ever since I've been messing with them so 
even though the defaults are not what YouTube says they want, it was working. Uh, <clears throat> and again, when it, when it did stop working, I don't, I guess it was a coincidence because it hasn't fixed to get away from it. But, uh, that audio cam too in every scene, this is, this is not the pro scene collection that that's in, but that audio cam too in every scene, after I put that in there is when it started crashing. It could be a coincidence, so I still don't know. So, um, I'm going to, um, oh good, I was afraid my video was broken and I was talking for nothing, but I wasn't going to quit just in case it was working. All right, so I'm going to go and, um, I am really, really tired now. I guess it's really bedtime. Oh, I haven't had a bath yet. That's right. Dang it. So, yeah, I don't want to quit because I have so much I want to get done, but it's 11.33 now. And last night, I actually, I stayed up. I didn't quit. I went back. Well, I've done it tonight, too. I ate supper. I got real hungry earlier, and I ate supper, and I went back to work. Did that last night and stayed up till 4 in the morning, and then I actually... Woke up at 10.30, which is about what I've been, when I've been getting up every day this week. So, uh, you know, I've been sleeping pretty good late the last couple of weeks. So that's the first day I've slept like five or six hours or yeah, whatever it was, six, five to seven hours. I'm not sure. I've been sleeping like 10 and 10 and hours or more. <clears throat> and, uh, but it felt good to be rested. <laughs> and, um, so anyway. Yeah, and that's why I'm so tired. I didn't get as much sleep and everything else. And I hate going to bed without a bath. I can't, sometimes I can't even sleep good. And if I don't do that, if you know, if I do go to bed, I get so tired, I go to bed without a bath, and I have to take a bath one, before I can do anything else. I have to eat breakfast first, of course, and then before I can do anything else, I have to go to bed. So that makes you know takes a couple more hours out of my morning. <clears throat> so. Um, okay, that's, um, uh, that's enough of all this fun then, so I'm going to go, but I am so curious, I, I don't know why I think it's going to stream, but I don't, I don't think it will, but <laughs> I'm going to hit stream, I'm going to close, I'm going to close it, to make sure the settings I've been doing get saved, hit stream, and I keep wanting to try this and try that, but I can't do that. But yeah, the thing the only things I've got left to do is um, I can't. Well, I mean, I can change some settings, and, and like I said, well, okay, I want to get off of the MP4 for my. If I if all I end up doing is just making recordings, but actually, if I'm going to over reinstall it, that'll set it back to the defaults right there, and then I can import my scene collections. I'm not worried about those. I don't think. Well, at least this one, this one here. That I'm on right now. Uh, now I've lost my place here. The scene collection I'm on right now, um, without any uh, you know that copy and pasted Cam Two audio stuff. It's uh, this one. I don't think it would uh, wouldn't be uh, worried of of it not working. Actually, what I can do is manually put in like just a desktop or something or just a camera. And the mic, and uh, well, the mic will be there, I think. I might have to add it. I might have to turn on, like, go into settings and turn on at least the SM58, and then add desktop or add the camera just to do a test. And uh, <coughs> then uh, go ahead and import my all this hard work, you know, <laughs> so, and hope, and hopefully it will continue to work but if it doesn't stream after I reinstall it then I'll be stuck oh yeah the updates I do have to check and see if it's getting updates I guess the easiest way to do that is to say uh, well I don't want to do that right now I can just you know go into the terminal and say DNF update I need to go check and make sure whether I actually turned them on or not you have to go in and edit a couple of config files it's not hard but you know I have to go find my information because I can't remember <laughs> where they are or anything so I'm gonna go because I'm um, just now really crashed and burned so much I don't hardly know what I'm doing all right bye-bye mm -hmm.